Hello. Okay, I'm feeling a bit more alive today than I was last night. Not much, just a little bit more. But I've had a very productive day. Very productive. Anyway, what are we talking about tonight? Yesterday we watched that live with web sleuths. And oh my god, was that explosive. Hi there, make a difference. Good to see you here. That was explosive. Chris come up. I don't know even if we had the info. He was actually supposed to be on the live. I don't think he was because he was in chat. And then I put the link out for him to come up. Right? But he came up and he was like a raging bull from the moment he got up on there. It was like, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to take no crap from any of them. They will listen to me. And sort of thing. Because the way he kept going on about he was like more concerned about what people were saying about him and about his precious wife Katie than he was Sebastian. We are all out here trying to find something. Don't know what we're not gonna find him. We are not gonna find him. Us YouTubers are not going to find Sebastian. I did have people this, but we're not. We just put out information. Be fine. So, he's coming on and he's going on about the comments people are putting in the uh, chat. I'm not P-I-S-S-E-D, drunk, belligerent. Yes, you was, Chris. You was. I can read the comments. Whoa, let's give him a round of applause. He could read the comments. Oh, my Lord. He's not there to read the comments. You're there to talk about Sebastian. Who gives a hoot what people think about you? If you are innocent and you've had nothing to do with this, with Sebastian, as you say, walking out that front door, you're so adamant he walked out that front door and just disappeared from the porch. Hmm. Yeah, right. So... He wasn't a happy bunny, I shall say. So anyway, the hen, he's having a right go at the women, the PIs on the panel. He really is. And that's going, it's disgusting the way he's talking to these women. Do you know what? I think we see the true Chris Proudfoot last the other night on that live. That is a Chris Proudfoot everyone knows. Not this, yes ma'am, no ma'am, three bags full ma'am. Not that one. No. He's the one we see while we heard talking on that live the other night. I just, what says, could you imagine living with someone like that? Yeah, okay, I have been blind. Right? But I had respect for people. If they showed me respect, I showed them respect. Right? And those women, those PRs, did nothing to him. Nothing. He's having a go at the one PR because apparently she's never tried to get in touch with him. 
whereas the other one has made phone calls and spoke to him and his wife. Right? You don't need two PIs getting in touch with you. You don't. You just need one because then they both work together. So the other one will pass that information on to each other and whatever information that PI gets, she passes to the other. You don't need two PIs phoning you up and asking you the same flipping questions. So. So I tried my best last night to go through that interview with you. I really, really did. But I did skip a lot because it was, and I did have it on 1.25 speed. But it was still dragging on. Still dragging on. And his voice was just making me so mad. Even Seth. Seth come up. I only wanted to know. Right, when he first come up, he had a bit of a problem with his connection, internet connection. When he first come up, he asked about um, why it was taking him so long after he'd sent him an email and messages over a week ago. Why had it took him so long to get in touch with him? Right? But now I know why Seth wants to work with him wants them to be united because Seth wanted their permission to go on their property, their land, with the search dogs, with the uh, people searching, you know what I mean? It's not a big property, it's not a lot of land, but you still have to get permission. So by having him work with him, he'd get that permission. But, oh no, 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 Chris has to do his own Research. He don't trust uh, Seth. Seth. Right? And then he's putting Seth down at every chance he could. I helped him get that job. I encouraged him to stay on and do the training. I did this. I did that. It was all him, him, him. There was nothing. And he kept saying, we're here about for Sebastian. Are you? Are you re Was you really there that night about Sebastian? Because I didn't hear nothing come out about your mouth, Chris, about Sebastian. The only time you said anything about Sebastian was when you didn't want to answer certain questions. Right? And then, oh my lord, Seth said something. He said it very low. He didn't say it very loud because I didn't quite hear him. I, know he, I heard him say something, but I didn't know what. And I had my headphones on. And Chris automatically jumped up and said, oh, no, no, come on, Seth, what was it you wanted to say? Tell us, ask me. Now, all Chris had to do, he knew what Seth had said, he heard it. All Chris had to do was say, you know what, Seth, that is something we will talk about after this live. Right? Put a squash to it. Stop it there. Oh, no, not Chris. No, Chris, the man of the hour who knows everything. Of course, he even knows the TBI and, and the sheriff's office, uh, Bobby, and, Bobby and whoever, by their first name. Right? Well, I hope you don't go, Hi, hello, Bobby. Hello, whoever the other one was. Because that would be disrespectful. They've got titles. They've worked hard to get them titles. You know what I mean? So. He's having a go then at Seth. And all Seth wanted to do was for them to together on that forum squash the rumour that was going around about his mother and his stepfather. That's all he wanted to do. But Chris wasn't having it. He was accusing of Seth of... He was saying Seth was accusing his parents of this and that. 
He wasn't. He wanted to squash the uh, the uh, rumor, right? Because Seth is fed up of all these stupid rumors going around. I'm fed up with all these stupid rumors. But like I said, in between some of these rumors, there is the truth. The truth is in there. All right. Like, didn't his sister say, I comment saying, perhaps he got into someone's car one night, that night, just to sleep, find a car that was opening and got into the back of the car or the back of, back of a truck and fell asleep. And then the person's got up the next morning, jumped in his truck and gone to work. He's woke up not knowing where he was. Now, people can read into that. I don't think it happened. How do I see? I don't think that happened. Right? And, um, I can't. But was she dropping a hint, Matt? Maybe he was put in the back of a car somewhere. Was that a hint by her? We don't know. And we will never know. Right? Me, personally, I don't care about the barrel socks. I really don't. They're the dirt that I wipe off my shoe when I walk into a house. You know what I mean? I mean nothing to me. I've not even spoken about them in my mother, mother and my stepfather. I don't really care about them. I care about Sebastian. And I care about Seth. Because Seth is broken. He's broken. He just wants his son. Either way, he just wants his son. And that, I was going to try and find that interview. Peter Hyatt interview. Hold on. Let's see if I can find it. It's just that I've been so busy. This today. Up. Right. I believe it is. The key to locating Sebastian. Now, it's 45 minutes longer, so I want to just try and find well, no, some of it, because it is, it is very interesting. He knows what he doesn't know what he's talking about. This, this Peter Hyatt, right? It's not stupid, right? And Chris is only mad with Seth going on there because Chris has not been on there because Peter Hyatt. It's called them out already. He believes Katie has got a lot to do with this. So why would they go on his on his channel? They're not are they? They only go on people's channels. Who believes them? Who doesn't judge them? Like news channels, they can't make judgments. They can't judge people, right? So they go on these news channels. They go on YouTube channels where they've got the people who support them. So, anyway, I'm just going to set this up so that we can listen to it. As I said, did just do, I'll set it a bit faster. Uh, uh, because sometimes some of these YouTubers, I know I talk quick, but some of these, and I have tried to slow down my talking. But some of these, like, oh, God, when's the next word coming out? Where are you going to talk a little bit faster? So, as I said, I don't have, in the 45 minutes, I, put, I have got time in the day to watch this, but I haven't got time to sit there and watch two, three hours of a channel no more. I used to. I don't know. I don't. So, let's just... 
Okay. Plugging it. So this is the key to locating Sebastian Rob Rogers. Bar. Greetings and welcome to this video. Um, I purpose oh, to come on and just talk. Oh God, I'll get my headphones. I'll get my headphones. Let's, let's just make sure it's all there. Yeah. All right, let's get. Talk about uh, a singular theme of what I believe to be the key to finding missing 15 year old Sebastian Rogers. Um, hopefully alive, but as the time has gone on, it was, I think, February 26th. Uh, we're reaching two months. It becomes much more difficult for anyone to uh, hold on to hope that way. Uh, while, while I was getting set to this, uh, Seth reached out and I invited him to come on so easier. And, and uh, I'd like to just to address uh, this one particular issue that I think is, is very important. What prompted me to want to do this, and I'm, I'm pleased to have Seth, and, and uh, I recognize that the, this is a, a nightmare that the only way to survive it is uh, perhaps a, some form of denial as time goes on for him. But it was a, a recent video that someone sent me uh, of Sebastian's mother. Seth doesn't that, talk a lot in this. Uh, and some of the reactions within social media that were, you know, I think concerning. I'm, I'm not sure how distracting they really are, um, but there's a lot of information that is listed as breaking and bombshell and, and life continues to go on, days continue to pass and uh, Sebastian is not found or recovered. Um, in a recap for the, for the case, and, and I won't make you wait as I hand the key, which is still another mystery itself, but, um, a recap is 15-year-old boy with autism was reported missing. And I've interviewed a lot of kids over the years through child protective services that had autism. It seemed to me uh, experientially that no two were alike. Um, and I had to adjust in the moment to be able to reach them. And, and you know, there's some similarities of muted emotions or you know, regulated emotions. Um, and parents know how difficult that is and um, have better insight than me going from interview to interview and, and, and moving on. When he went missing, um, I think the first thing that everyone kind of recognized. Is this is the interview that Chris mentioned in that live. That apparently after that vigil, they did, right, where Steph come out and said they're going to be working together, himself, KP and CP are all working together now to find Sebastian. All right, okay. I wasn't said because I knew they wouldn't work with him. I knew that. But then Chris said, Three hours after that vigil, he come on this live. Could have been three hours later, could have been the next morning. I don't know. But he said how he accuses his his wife, Kathy, of uh, uh, having something to do with the disappearance of Seth, uh, Sebastian. And I've just sort of said, when I said KP, in a bowl by the side of me, I've got some dry roasted peanuts. And over here we have KP's salted peanuts. So she's telling all bulls. All everything says is BS. KP nuts. He is that. 
Anyway, I'm going to say because I've got to go and get a drink. There's, there's a step parent involved. And when there's a, a, a high needs child, the risk is, is, is a, it's a risk factor. It's something that is taken into consideration because uh, it is really difficult. Uh, and parents will tell you how difficult that is, and they need family support, and they need um, as much help from a community as they can get. I mean, it's really difficult, and they they make mistakes. They they struggle, and to say otherwise just isn't reality. And so there's a risk factor. Oh no! Uh, number one is a high needs child, autism, gone missing. They're going to have behaviors. Some of them are runaways. Um, some of them are not. Some of them will um, bury themselves. You know, it's, it's all very different, but it's um, it's a tragedy that we might see on uh, the television, for example, but not live. So it's it's right off the bat, and then we have the um, the presence. You know, according to what we saw in the news, the presence of a stepfather. Um, but the first thing, and, and that's a respecter. But the first thing that comes up in this was silence. That you. Know, an investigator will ask, well, who's the to see Sebastian alive? Under whose watch did a child go missing? That's just the you know 101, the beginning where things begin. And so the public responded, I think, from at least what, what I read, uh, they were angry. Why are these people being silent? And, and it goes against um, especially a mother's in Instinct. The, you know, the father is protect, the mother is nurture, nurture, nurture. G these things come from um, creation. These are God given. For a mother to be silent, there's generally there's one of two reasons. Generally, the others, but either police has have revealed to the mother, there's no point in you for your son. We you have evidence of his death, we, you know, the blood, we have this, that, the wrestle of denial and uh, grieving and and then not believing. And it's just, a, it's a lot of emotions. And, then, you know, there could be other reasons. But generally speaking, if a mother has, a child went missing on a mother's watch and the mother has nothing to hide, they are out front and they're, they're giving a description of Sebastian, including style of walking, clothing, everything else, of course course, but um, any type of reaction. So people could recognize him. In, in this sense, she's calling out to him. An interviewer will say, how are you? Um, there's a certain element there where even the most inflamed mother is going to say, I, I'm okay. I'm hanging in there. This is a nightmare. And then move the conversation, grab it, move it back to, um, here's what we're looking. Here's where I have to find them. I need your help. Um, Sebastian, grab any adult. There's this um, stymieing of maternal instinct that is very powerful. The bear says, no, no, you can't tell me to be quiet. So they did finally speak out. And when I say they, I'm, now I'm talking about mother. Yeah, but she never said anything like that. First interview they did on the they an interview on the on news channel. I don't know if they can ever on your YouTube channel, I believe. I don't know. They said they dig a lot. They dig a lot in the first few couple of weeks after the police scaled back the search. Katie and Chris did a lot of interviews. Right? Now I heard, I read something or heard something. Was it last night about Seth? Right? About his first interview he done. His first interview was a week, literally, they scaled back the search, they told them on the Sunday, or Monday, they scaled back the search. They did these interviews then on the, you know, Sunday, Monday, they did the interviews. Seth didn't do an interview till the following Friday, and only because he was at a vigil, and Nick Barris was there. Apparently, he come from the gym. We also had the camera guy there with him as well. That was good, wasn't it? Good timing. But Nick Barris was there and did this impromptu interview with him. 
And people are saying, I knew from that first interview he did, he's guilty. I'm going, okay, everyone's got their reasons, their points of views, they've got their opinions. But for feck's sake, have you all got a flipping screw loose? This guy, Seth, was at work. He works in a corrections facility. And in a corrections facility, don't get me wrong now, don't get me wrong, they have criminals. And they are not going to walk, let these criminals just walk around the facility without a camera watching their every move. Right? They've got cameras on the inside of the building. They've got cameras on the outside of the building. They've got cameras on every door. They've got cameras on every hallway. You know what I mean? There's cameras everywhere in them buildings. They've got Seth on camera. They've got him logged in. I think he said in one the first interview, one of the first interviews he did, he got there about 6.30, 6.45. He didn't start work till 7. Right? But they like, he likes to get there early just to find out what's been happening. And so you can do the handover sort of thing. And then he didn't leave till about quarter past 7. 10 past 7, quarter past 7 the next morning because he's waiting to see if they needed anyone to stay over because they were sh short-staffed. They didn't, so he then left. Long clocked out and left. Got to his car about 20 past 7. So please, screw, get the screw. Get them screws that you've lost somewhere. Please. I'm telling you now, they've got... Said uh, Seth on camera from the moment he went into work to the moment he got into his car again. Because I can assure you, they've got cameras on the car park. They'll have cameras on the car park. They'll have cameras on the outside of the building. You know what I mean? So they'll have him from the moment he pulled up in his car to start work the night before on a Sunday to the moment he walks out to his car and drives away on the Monday morning. So please, no more. Oh, but he's guilty. He's done it. You've got people saying, he could have had someone around, around to someone else done it. No, he could. It was who's gone in that house and got their son must have had the code for their front door. Seth doesn't have that code for their front door. So, please, and law enforcement won't clear Seth because if they do, then the key focus will be on CP and KP. Well, Seth's been cleared. Why haven't you? So they're not going to clear Seth because they don't want any focus being thrown on anyone. They want this investigation done properly so that if there is any charges coming, they've crossed all the T's and dotted all their I's. So they're not going to clear no one, even though Seth Rogers is on camera. He's got the one sort of job that is his, his job is his witness, you could say. His job is his witness. A better witness than his job. You've got all the cameras. You've got his colleagues. You've got criminals. <laughs> if you can believe a word that I say. But yes, you've got criminals. who say, yeah, he locked me up. Oh, yeah. He did this, he did that. You know what I mean? You've got all these people as witnesses, plus their cameras. So, come on, back off, leave Seth, 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 uh, can't get me words out, you know. Leave Seth alone. He's a, he's a broken man. Anyway, let's continue. And step up. 
is the, the information will lie somewhere there. And when stepfather did most of the talking and was obvious in control, and they seemed to have scripted in the interview, people recognized it. People without tra training recognized it, saying, uh-oh, this is scary. Look, Listen to this guy. Yep. And so people did ask questions, especially um, after that, the first interview, and people didn't believe him. And the social media backlash was on these two. And then there's the dad in the background, you know, with this heartache of being distant, but not having knowledge of what happened. Now, when I analyzed that first interview, I said, um, they've coordinated their statements, their story. And mom is withholding information about what happened. And I'd like to just to give you an idea about it. With the um, the social media and the instant um, churning of the you know the bombshell and the breaking news and um, people have sent me outrageous things, just foolish and outrageous things. And then there's the psychics that I've talked about before, people that call themselves psychics or readers or energy or whatever the wording may be. Um, they're deceivers. And you'll you'll notice if you read enough of them, what they do is they work on the element of vagueness. And they look for those without discernment to bring in. Um, that's all fine and well. And if you'd like to believe that, you can. Um, I don't. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for reasons I can state pretty plainly. But it, what it comes down to is listening when someone speaks. I had a case years ago where, um, and this was uh, in correlation with FBI agents working on it, where... Um, you see, that's the thing. People on YouTube, like myself and other YouTubers, we're not very good at seeing bug, telling buggy reactions, we're not. There's certain things per, a person can do. Like, if you say something and they're not happy with it, they can lean back and fold it up. Things like that. The only thing I, I ever pick up on is what they call deepest delight. So, as YouTubers, we just tend to listen to the words. All right? And how they say these words. How they, put, how they put it into context, into a sentence. Like, I picked up on the fact that she said, I went in. The, I went in to. I went in and woke him up, and he was gone. Right? Okay. Fair enough. Then, when she was talking about when those she was driving around, she said I was driving around and and he, but then stopped, and he was what, and he what. You know what I mean? She stopped. She said, I was driving up by the school and around him and, and he. And but stopped. And then in another interview, the latest one she did was, it's a tragedy. A tragedy is someone uh, passing away during the sleep. A tragedy is something happening without any reason, where you don't understand why it happens after tragedy, where you know, a home's caught on fire. That's a tragedy. You know what I mean? So those three, those two statements, little statements, and that one word, just when, as soon as she said that one word the other week in that interview, that just confirmed to me what I believe, in my opinion. So, um, let's keep a little bit, because I'm not, I don't know if he talks here or not. I don't think he does. Two young, young women were murdered in a very rural area. Yeah. Yeah, and just like a the case went cold. They, you know, they found the, the bodies at the car. It was a missing child. And as it turned out, he didn't do it. Um, and so he said, well, how did he know so many things? Is it some kind of psychic or um, 
a power beyond the means of understanding that, that people have. Is he somehow, no, the guy, under, he was a true crime fan and he knew, and in my opinion, he accepted human nature for what it is. He knew, he, he was a good listener and a good writer, intelligent guy, but he didn't do it. And so that, that ended that way. In interviewing um, kids with autism, it's, you know, it's difficult. Um, I've interviewed a lot of adults with adult autism, which can be very, very difficult because there's perseveration. There's, there's a repeating of something that happened maybe 20 or 30 years ago and getting convictions is really difficult. Um, I did the, the case, some of you recognize, of Nathan Carmen, where he went off on a boat ride with his mom and the boat sank and uh, his mom didn't get onto the life raft and he, he survived and uh, told the story. And I filmed a news program on that saying, he's lying. Very muted emotionally, but he's lying. He's being deceptive. The answer was found in him. Eventually, I worked with the family, and at the time I was doing the, the, the news program, they also had someone on saying, oh, you can't, um, you can't analyze the words of someone with that disorder, adult autism, or um, Asperger's. So, yeah, you really can. If they can communicate, you've got to listen. And as it turned out, um, yeah. police had known that he had uh, sabotaged the boat, and he was also a suspect in the killing of his grandfather. All this had to do with the inheritance of $10 million. His aunts knew. The family had contacted me, and uh, he was finally arrested, and he committed suicide in jail. So it didn't end well. When Sebastian went missing, the key to, to finding him, the key to everything lies with the mother. In order to find him, you have to know under what circumstances he went out that door. You have to know that. She withheld that information and it was very carefully guarded over by stepfather. So if it stepfather wasn't there, then why would he have the same guilt? And this is my theory on it. And, and then I'll, I'll let Seth comment on any of those things. The key to locating either Sebastian's remains, or at least the trail of where it goes that if someone grabs him and he's still alive, the key to locating him lies with that mother. You have to tell what happened. We have to understand his mindset. We have to understand what he was like at that moment. So here are two factors within that that I think are... After you've done this, I just want to get to the bit really where Seth talks. But once, once we finish this, there's been an article come out, um, some information out today, and we're going to look at this information. Is it true? Is it not? You know what I mean? Is it him? Is it not? And we'll decide then. Blame the victim, that sort of thing. And they did. That's self-defense. That is preservation. If Katie wants him found, whether he is deceased or alive, she has to give up the same key from the very beginning that remains all this time, two months later. Just tell the truth of what happened. But self-preservation is blocking that. And this is why my belief on, on uh, stepfather's involvement is so uh, important. They discussed it. That was a conversation. Kate, KP's self-preservation is called CP. That's her self-preservation, CP. Conversation that she had a need, and he did too, to say took place. Now, they, of course, he's, he's obviously clever. He knows that they're going to be able to look at their phones and say, oh, it was a three-hour conversation the night that 15-year-old with special needs went missing. But I also have the gap of missing information of that evening. Somewhere after dinner, and between 6 a.m., there's missing, and missing information means with deliberately withheld information. Yep. And so that key has always been from the moment it happened, you know what, put aside everything. And, and I think it's too late at this point, but put aside everything. Your child is missing. Tell police everything. Okay? There was probably a blow up of some form, or you foolishly locked him out. Face consequences with that. But tell the truth. Um, because even if he is deceased, he deserves a proper and respectful burial. And even yeah. if it was unintended and just foolish anger, because you, you've seen the anger of the stepfather, I can imagine what he said on the phone to her in three hours. But to her in three hours, um, Sebastian deserves better. Oh yeah. So, um, Seth, thank you for joining. Um, that is, I believe, the key, at least to, to somewhere that investigators need to go back with her, re-interview, uh, passing a polygraph of saying I didn't uh, cause his death and I don't know where he is. This, this is different. The information has to be learned uh, until they take her back and put her under a bit more pressure, right? She say a thing, because one, 
she's scared of CP and his family. She knows what he he's like, and he knows what she knows what I like. She knew that when with Nina. You know what I mean? She knew Nina. So I believe she's not telling us everything, and that's because CP is holding against her. Like if if I go down for this, I'm gonna drop you in it as well, sort of thing. Not saying that he has. It's just my opinion. But I do believe CP because why would a person who allegedly has now been confirmed he was at his job site at five fifteen in the morning, even though he didn't have to start till seven. Seven. He was there at five fifteen. Why was he there so early? So now I would be in the TBI and whatever doing a search of his works. Because why would he be there so early? Why? Could you throw, did, do they have them big uh, clips? The construction site, and all construction sites have these big tip, tips. Could you put Sebastian in there? Before anyone else seen But then again, his car is not parked on the site itself, it's parked off the site. It's next to the site, sort of thing, they park the car. So he'd have to. The chances of him not being seen carrying a body across the construction at 5.15, very slim. Because if, there's got to be other people on from, if they do a night shift, people there doing a night shift would see him. But he is confirmed to have been at work at 5.15 a.m. that morning. Why? Right. And why is he? Being the mouthpiece, he wasn't there when Sebastian as I walked out that door. I don't know why he walked out that door. All the doors were locked. Yep. Okay, we believe you. We believe that aliens above your house zapped him up out of his bedroom. Yes. Okay. No, we don't. We don't. We're not stupid. We wasn't born yesterday. And even if we was, we still wouldn't be stupid. Like that. Right? But my problem is, why is Chris doing all the talking? Kate is now done an interview on her own. It was only a short interview. It wasn't a long one. I got no uh, because she kept seeing her look over at this summit on the to the right of her, um, to the left of her, over at something. So I can understand having um, notes written down. You know what I mean? Because sometimes in, if you're doing an interview, you might forget something, something of importance you want to get out there. So I can understand her looking at her notes. The only interview she's ever done on her own. Since. Right? So, I think this might be where success talks now. Um, these are common interviews that are done. Uh, even as um, stepfather's ex wife spoke, in a child protective interview, everything is on the table. Seth, your life is, is put under a microscope. Everyone's life, where can he be safe? You know, if he's found alive, where can he be safe? So all is fair. All is out there. Um, and it, I don't believe it's anything to do with clean mud, but to give a portrait of what Sebastian was living under. I mean, is there is there anyone present that would like to live under stepfather's rule from what we've heard? No. no. I wouldn't even let my... From what we've heard out of his own mouth? Is there anyone that would say, hey, sounds like a good parent to me. Would anyone let, you, let him babysit your cat? No. Some comments uh, from you, Seth. My cats are my babies. No. 
I'm going to rub something in here. Might be minding it, yes. Minding it, playing up a little bit. Oh, so is my internet. So is when I come on alive. I can be on here all day and have no problem. As soon as I do a live, I start losing my internet. Don't know why. But it's so annoying. But, um, yeah. She is the last one to speak to him. I believe Katie did something to me. It could have been an accident if I were dosing him. Dosing. You have a lot more experience and stuff. I appreciate you having me on the panel. I, I think he probably fell out of his bed and bumped his head. Does he any bit crazy to you? No. Um, I was married to her for a long time. And you're right on a lot of a lot of key factors you're right on. You know, I believe that she did not open up at the beginning. Reading her body language while I was there. Oh, come on, meeting it. I swear to God, I'm going to phone him up tomorrow, lagging a police. Every night I come on alive and this happens. She's not telling everything. I just don't know how long she's going to continue before she decides that she's going to unburden herself. I hope, that, I hope she breaks. I hope she breaks because maybe... Could be. Could be. Could be. But then... He will give investigators like <coughs> into... Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Changing course in terms of what they were looking for. God, it could be that, Tracy, but having a missing child in your home, go missing from your home, is not going to help his case with the um, with the courts to get your, your daughter back, is it? It's not going to help his case. Because they're going to be thinking, hold on, you're going for custody of your daughter, but you've just had, you've got a missing stepson who's not being found you know what i mean and we don't know what is being said in these court cases with him and his ex-wife because he's had all that sealed so we don't know what he's said in there about if he's said anything about sebastian if they've got him in hiding anywhere if they've got him in some organization we don't know because not even the judge can say what is said in the court because it's all sealed. And why did Chris have it all sealed? Because JLR went went investigating. Good old JLR. I believe she wasn't open up to she wasn't open up to the police and not telling her I hope she breaks I would love right to see her statement that she gave the police the first they like when anything like this happens you have to give the police a statement anything happens you have to give a statement yeah and I would love to get my hands on that because if you think of that Michael Stearns and the mother in that case, she gave a statement to her, the police and she said the last time she saw her daughter was on the night time when they were talking about the party and she's saying how, took when the, she said she's telling her how, what the gifts she had and all this lot. But then, and that's what she tells the police. Then in the interview, she says, last time I saw my daughter was about 8 a.m. She was getting ready for school. That wasn't what she told the police. So, no, it won't. It won't. None of what is coming out in this will help his case with his daughter. None of it. So, 
I don't see how Chris hiding anything or covering up for KT is going to help him. It isn't. I think, and this is my true opinion as well, my opinion. In one of the first interviews they did with um, that news reporter, I'd like to try and get the, it coming in four parts. The one that's out now is just a shortened version of it. Right? But it come in four parts, about four or five minutes a section. Right? And in one part of it, he said something to the words like, we digging, or are, it was either we digging or I digging, expected to. Uh, what was the word to be used? Like, yeah. And um, he said he wasn't expecting it to, like, oh, I'll just use the word explode, right? He wasn't expecting it to explode like it did, to go go off like it did. He was expecting it to be, oh, well, it's a, it's a runaway. We'll have a look for him. If you don't find him, I'm sure he'll come home. So they did have a look for him, right? But the police were looking at it as a, he just walked out of the house. He'd done a walk. He'd walked away, right? And that's what Chris and Katie was hoping the police would do. And they did. But what they didn't expect was Seth. Seth didn't believe that story. And neither did YouTubers. Right? I don't know if Seth ever sees any of these on my lives. I don't know. But if he does, we're all here for him. And we'll, we'll always be here for Seth and Sebastian. And yes, okay, Chris and Katie. But not as much. I'm more worried about Seth with his health. Well... Because if it just turns out that he is, isn't with us no more, this is going to break him. This is broke now. He's a broken man now. So he's a broken man, and every morning I get up and I just I sit here on my sofa with my coffee, right. Got my coffee ready and I sit there and I turn my TV on, go on to my YouTube channel. And I'm thinking, I sit there with my eyes closed first. I'm thinking, please give us some good news. Please give us some good news. Please, just once, give us some good news. You know what I mean? But we're not getting any. So anyway, I'm going to carry on with this because Seth was talking. Because there are certain things that aren't making sense. Um, but I heard from you about his experience with bare feet. And we, you know, the, obviously the Seekers of Shoes has played a, a, quite a, a role in all this. Um, and then I heard Stepfather talk a lot. And I, that, that's the language of an abuser. And that's when I thought they may have been trying to teach him some lesson how to be. That's the language of an abuser. Because I have not seen this interview before yet. I just don't know how long she's going to continue before she decides that she's going to unburden herself. Well, I hope that, I, I hope she breaks. I hope she breaks because maybe it will give the investigators insight into um, changing course in terms of what they were looking for. Because there are certain things that aren't making sense. Um, but I heard from you about his experience with bare feet. And we, you know, the, obviously the Seekers of Shoes has played a, a, quite a, a role in all this. Um, and then I heard stepfather talk a lot, and I, that, that's the language of an abuser. And that's... he did. He said that's the language of an abuser, didn't he? He said he. 
that's the language of an abuser. Thank you. I'll look, I'll look Peter Hoyer. That's when I thought they may have even trying to teach him some lesson how to be a man and go out there with his bare feet or something something happened that night, an altercation of some form of which they have coordinated their accounts together since then. And so my hope is that maybe if there is a, a break in the relationship, maybe the maternal instance will take over and she'll say, well, you know, here's what happened. I, I, you know, I don't want to hold this burden any longer. And I didn't intend for it to end as it did, but here's what happened. That's what I'm hoping for. I can only hope. I still pray that my son's alive. Yeah. And the sooner she unburdens herself, the sooner we can either find him, triangulate, on a course of action. I understand that um, you're trying to work together. I'm hoping that she'll work together. I'm hoping that both her and Chris will actually start working with me so that I can work with them. I mean, that was pretty much the whole discussion last night before the vigil. And I'm, uh, I do hope that they actually work with me. If my child goes missing, my first call is to police, my second call is to bio father. Great comment. I mean, it's just so common, such a, a natural reaction. Look, Katie didn't speak to Seth before Sebastian went missing. Right? It was an agreement between the two of them. But if Sebastian needed new shoes or new glasses or anything, she would ask him. And he would go out, buy these glasses or buy the shoes. I'm wondering, did she ask him or did Chris speak to him? Right? I don't think she spoke much to Seth. So why is she going to now her, start working with Seth? She's not. She's got a mouthpiece, CP. Um, Seth came to listen. Is That was what he said. And he is in need of working with others. So um, otherwise I'd be asking. A lot of questions. Lloyd, I don't think you have many answers, Seth. I haven't had a lot of. I've had a lot of questions since this has started. Were you, were you there that night? The answers. Were you there that night? I wasn't. Who was there that night? Katie and Sebastian. And that's where the key lies is uh, in a, the mother that was there. Tell the truth, Jason's an analyst. Yeah, they need to pull her in. And I think that's another reason she goes down to Memphis or wherever it is that they go. Because Chris don't want her at the house on her own. Because then, the, while well, he's not there, because then law enforcement and TBI can talk to her without him being there. And he won't have that. So... Sorry to hear that though, Tracy. But it's not. If, if that is how that interview, the other night, how he spoke to those three women on the panel, I think it was vile. But that is my, what I think is the true Chris. That's the true Chris. It's all right, my internet's playing up. Yeah. Thank you. She should be interviewed more without Chris around. Yeah, certainly, I certainly agree. There should, there should be a, I think, if they know anyone that she is close to, that she would confide in. Uh, in, in terms of, of criminality, there may not be there. It may, it, it may not be considered um, criminal behavior in the sense that there was a, a, a fight or something took place without Sebastian to testify. There's probably not going to be any consequences. My hope is just, just come out and talk out and talk to the investigators, and as Jason said, alone, and come um, No one I think can argue with Annie P. She'll never talk with Chris in her ear. Um, 
No, I mean, he's, he's obviously concerned about the other case going on. He's concerned about his reputation. And he's willing to really go after people who don't leave him with anger and rage. So if you've seen that, you can probably consider what it was like for Sebastian with his difficulties, living under. So, but apparently Chris said he accused Katie of doing something with Sebastian, being involved with disappearance. He didn't accuse her of anything. He's just said he doesn't believe she's saying everything and she needs to come clean. She needs to start talking. Yeah, the TBI can call her in. They need to do something because this is ridiculous now. This is, well, 60 days for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, no Monday. 63 days now. But I'm sorry about this, everyone. My internet is fine. I don't know why you keep doing Um, are you working now, Seth? No, I haven't gone back to work. It's really hard to think about anything but my son. Yeah. That's understood. Here's a couple more comments. And, uh, and if you're lying, you're not cooperating. Exactly. Exactly. You know, this is a time to... Um, I'm going to see if... If anything else is set by Seth. And Seth, as you if you've come just to listen, and I appreciate you coming on. Um, I'm not throwing the questions out but coming into the chat. Uh, just some of the things. Um, the most recent interview, KP looks like she's reading up a script. Um, I agree. They're being made enough a script on all that. Which means, you know, if, if I'm her and I'm getting the scripted message, one of the things about that was it was clear. Here's, here's one question I would like to answer. It scrolls by pretty quickly. I'm doing my best to try to get that. But someone asked about um, the statement of, uh, you know, when they're finally reaching out to you, you're not in trouble. Uh, that was a great question. I, I'm sorry I can't post it there. Um, that shows someone's... Exactly. Why would they say that? Why you... right. um, you're not in trouble. Why would you be in trouble anyway? I would know. If a child of mine had gone missing, that wouldn't have even come into my mind way of thinking. You know what I mean? You're not in trouble, just come home. No. It'll be, babes, just come home. We'll... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Eating those dry roasted. It'll be, oh, say something like, Babes, sweetheart, babes, just come home. We miss you. We want you home. The house is the house is empty without you. We need you here. You know what I mean? So Listening, and there was trouble. You're in trouble. It was wouldn't be said. So very good observation. Um, again, I, I think I've said this before. Um, and I'll, again, here, if you get a chance, there's a video on YouTube of one of the most brilliant minds I've ever. I had the pleasure of dealing with uh, Frank Marsh. He was an instructor at the FBI National Academy and um, 
military background. And he has a video, it's, it's old. It's called The Power of Questions. And it's something that, it's not just for investigators, it, it really is for life itself. And I, I can't recommend it more highly. It's, it's impacted me greatly. Uh, he had invited me uh, to uh, the FBI National Academy a number of years ago, um, where I was able to bring my daughter. Um, my wife has a, my daughter, Christina. And especially during lunch when he had, she had a full chance to talk with him, she was so impressed. It was life-changing uh, how powerful questions are. And that's what we want to ask. Yeah, he, uh, thanks, Lana. He's a brilliant mind. And um, it is the, the most powerful element within analysis, criminal analysis statement. Everything is to ask questions. And that's some of the basic questions. Is, um, why do you need to tell me you're a good mom if nothing bad happens? Right. It's like you've got the body language experts, yeah? Now, I, I, I used to like them. But to be honest with you, I think they won't commit themselves to anything. Because they get paid to do that. They get paid by whatever company or uh, whatever on YouTube to do this, to do what they do. So they say, oh, well, it, her behaviour is odd, it's disturbing or whatever. I'm not going to say anything like that because it's going to damage their reputation if they are. But people like Peter Hyatt, it's like, okay, I was wrong. I'm not scared to commit to giving, that, to giving their opinion like those body language experts are. And I used to watch them body language experts all the time. Yeah, apparently I read something on YouTube about how about Sebastian said they didn't want him there or was going to get rid of something like that. I can't remember now. And I thought, where's that come from? I haven't heard that said before. And I haven't heard Seth say anything like that. And I thought, that is just a... That's got to be clickbait to, my, to me. That has to be clickbait. Well, I was watching T Rev this morning. Hi. And sometimes he's still on a live when I get up, sometimes he's not. Right? And he wasn't. He'd finished his live a few hours before I got up. So I was watching his live. And I remember the live that I was talking about because. Apparently, someone said, do you remember the phone call you had? And this person was saying how, um, you know how it's all been out there about this King Davis saying he had video proof of seeing Sebastian get into or be put into the car of Chris's mother's car, right? Now, this all came out the other week, yeah? Last week. This phone call on T Rev was back in March, April. Where are we now? Are we on April still or May? I'm not sure what we're on anymore. Uh, no, we're still in April. <laughs> right? So this was like near the beginning, around about the 11th of April. And this guy phoned in saying he got video and T Rev was saying, Well, if you've got video, send it to me. Send it to me or send it to TBI. I'll email it, you know. Okay. And you could see T Rev kept refreshing his emails. Right? And nothing nothing was coming through. So today someone mentioned it to him. And he said, you know what? I forgot about that. So today he found out the phone number. Right, got the, the phone number because he went back to that video, seen what time the call come through, went into the call log and went all the way back to April the 11th at 9.45 p.m., I think he said. Yeah, April, April the 11th and um, 
Ik weet al waar je aan dat log denkt. Cool log. And he's looking for the area code. Right? And he found him. So he then sent the clip of the phone call with the phone number to TBI. And he even sent it to the uh, private investigator because she even come on the show. Right? And she just quickly spoke to him. And said, we will look into that. But yeah, I think it was Ken then. But they're saying they did research and they found a Ken Davis in a place called uh, Tang or whatever called White House. Yeah. Well, I found that Ken Davis, but I also found a Ken Davis twenty minutes away from where Sebastian lives. Now, that would make more sense. If he's seen, say, it was um, uh, Christopher's mother, car, up by the school, right? Say it was her car. It would make more sense. Well, this King Davis, I find, was 20 minutes. It was in, oh, where was it in now? See if I can find it again. Henderson. It was in Hendersonville. I remember now. But the one from White Church is Ken Davis Jr. But the one I found in Hendersonville was Ken Davis. And that would make more sense if he's going past that school. It, that's one of the main roads around there. Right? So it might make more uh, sense that the Ken Davis that lived in Hendersonville could be the father to the Ken Davis that lives in Whitechurch. Because the one in Whitechurch is Ken Davis Jr. And I'll see if I can find him. But oh, it took me a while to find it the other day to be I literally come across it just by fluke. Mm -hmm. No, not me. Hold on. Hang So I'm trying to find it now. That's it. I found it. Oh, no, no. It's not showing anything of that you shouldn't be seeing. Okay? Now, it's got here, King Davis, coming to the summit like of Hendersonville. Right? But when I click on all these, it's, it just blocks me because I'm in the UK. Uh, this one, Lake Terrace Drive. Do you know? Hmm, full name report. No, I'm not going to pay because I don't trust these sites. But there is a can hate Latest report as of the 4th, of 29th, 2024. Today. Right? 358 people have purchased this recently. Ha! <laughs> I wonder if it's anything to do with YouTube. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
I might do that tomorrow. I might. But I knew there was... But I didn't... Church or whatever. But then, as I was looking for that one, this one come up. I went, oh, damn, that thing. Right? And I'm sure I can give it up on there. See where King has lived. Like Terry's dry. No, I'm not paying for No. Right. So when I hear YouTubers going on about white church or whatever it is, or white house or whatever they call it, I'm thinking, oh, darn. There's one here in Hendersonville. Is this out of date now? It may be, but I don't think it is. So... See, it says here, address history, one. We found one address for King, and that was that one, Hendersonville, Tennessee. And it's, it says from 2011 to 2015, you might not live there no more then, because it's got from 2011 to 2015, unless they're just having updated, like, I know in the UK, you have where, you fill in this form and put in your name, you get, where you lived. It was like, um, what was it called now? It was like a register sort of thing. And you put in the, the address would already be in there, right? Sometimes there'd be other people's names under that address. So you just cross their names out, right? Put your name in. Your date of birth and all that. And that used to be great because you could look up anyone anywhere. But now they don't do it. They don't do that no more. So I'm thinking, oh, that's a pain because now I can't get the information I want on anyone in the UK. Hmm. Thank you very much. But they used to have it where every year you get this slip of paper come through and if you're if if there's another name on there under that address you just cross and it wasn't anything to do with you you would just cross it off and put your name and then you put like you uh your family like your husband your children's name right anyone if there's under a certain age you just click a across a box right so it wouldn't come up on the records. But if it was 18 and over, you tick another box so that their name will come up on the records. But anyone under 18, it never come up on the records. It wasn't public information, put it that way. It was it was on the records, but it wasn't public information. So I keep thinking, does he not live there no more then? I don't know. I might have to start paying for some of this information, you know. But would they let me have it if I live in the UK? Well, they can't really stop me having it if I'm willing to pay for it, can they? Anyway. Let's get back to this. Nearly I know you're not a behavioral analysis, but do you think she'll die on that pedestal? I don't know her enough to, to give an answer. Um, I agree with some of the people commenting that uh, I do think that relationship is going to break. That's his pattern anyway. Yeah. You might have a better insight into that if he's not around. That would be my hope. 
you know, uh, if any parent can lose their temper, any parent can. Totally. I've been shaking baby cases where they've been prosecuted. And generally speaking, no one that I ever interviewed woke up and say, oh, today I'm going to shake my baby. They lose it in a moment and yeah. life is, is forever altered. Right. It just damaged, took time. Deceased. Um, and it's a horrible, horrible thing. I'm hoping that they will split and that she will want to clear her conscience. And, um, I'll put it this way. P and Kipe, they do split up. Okay, who's going to talk first? Will it be CP? Will he tap on KP? Will it be KP? Drop it on CP? Mines, you don't know what they're going to do. But we really need to get them apart because he's controlling her. But I still don't think she'd say anything after if they did split up because she's scared of his family. His family lives what, half an hour away? In, um, where is it? Galaxy? So, I'll have a look into it tomorrow then. I see what information I can get off them. And that way I can see if he still lives there or not. You know what I mean? But that's what I came up with. In Hendersonville, and that would make more sense because he'd, have to, he'd be using that main road where the school is on, maybe to go to work or somewhere. But anyway, Rev T Rev has sent all that to the PI, so they're looking into it. And T FBI did step into the case the other week when there's that case of that guy saying he got he's got Sebastian and then it come out that he say Sebastian didn't want to go back to his mum and his stepdad and he'll only talk to Seth. Right. I thought, mm -hmm, no, no, this isn't it. No. This is a scam. I knew straight away. But you can't say that. You have to check it out. So, because it was a, like, a ransom then, he wanted money, FBI was brought into it. So, FBI was on that one the other, the other week. But, please, has anyone heard him accuse Kathy of doing anything? Even if it's a foolish, well... We decided to, you know, not let this behavior go on any longer. So I put him outside, and uh, he has to get over. I wanted him to get over his fear without the shoes on, or something like that. Something went wrong, and then someone just commented, "Something snapped. Something snapped." And when you hear this guy's anger and the language of abuse and the language of domestic violence, yeah, like what? Yeah, you know, what did your son live under? You know, it's hard enough being a 15-year-old uh, without any issues like autism. What did he live under? Um, here's, a, here's something of interest probably down the road, but yeah, civil lit, uh, litigations bring depositions and questions are asked. Questions are asked. Yeah. And even when someone ducks a question, that gives us information. So a good comment that girl. Um, are you being bothered at all by people claiming to have all sorts of psychic powers and magical insight? And... I, I don't play. I mean, people try that stuff. I got so tired of people stating that my son was dead. I mean, that <laughs> they don't have any clue what that stuff does to a person's faith and hope that their child is. I refuse to listen to that stuff anymore. As soon as somebody says, "Hey, there's this psychic," okay. I don't want to hear it. I have to have faith that my son is alive. I have to have faith that she'll tell me. I do terribly regret giving bold opinions on this. I, I don't wish to add to your pain any longer. With the um, the world of psychics and whatever wording anyone wants to use, it's fine. There's been some real damage done at times with parents who were vulnerable. I, I can't imagine being any more vulnerable than not being able to find my son and uh, being able to, to hear someone. It was just too much, too much. That's why we call it predatory. The best thing that I can say is I don't have social media. All I have is YouTube. And when I 
literally yeah. logged into YouTube to listen to some cryptid stories so I can lay down and try to sleep for about another hour or two. I saw yours I was getting ready to come on, and I listened to all yours. I enjoy that. I enjoy listening to you, whether you bring good information or bad information. Emotionally, I still like to listen to you. You're an expert. I consider you an expert. You are an expert. I hope that we get good news. I think each day means it's more difficult to have hope. Uh, I pray for all of you, including yeah, uh, not just Sebastian and you, but with poor mother and stepfather. I just like the, the truth to come out. And if there's anything within that truth that can bring us along, that's where it's going to lie. That person of whom Sebastian was with and there was no one else in the house. Yeah. That person knows more than they went on. And uh, Katie, if you're listening, uh, God forgive you, but come forward and, and, and talk. Talk for Sebastian's sake and really for your own as well. Well, thank you for, for coming on, Seth. Uh, thank you for having me, sir. Continue to, to press on the best you can. And um, I know it's got to be. As well, Seth is so respectful, right? Because he was just listening. He was looking at the comments because people said, oh, he's just looking at the comments. He's looking at the comments to see if there's any questions coming up that he hasn't thought of yet. Do you remember when you said on that one live, you just haven't, haven't asked the right questions? He's looking to see if there's any questions that he could, oh, I haven't thought about that one. Right, and he dropped it down. But I like Peter Hyatt because he is, he is uh, prepared to commit himself to give an answer. And we all know Katie was the last one to see Sebastian, to speak to Sebastian. Do you know what I mean? She was the last one. We need to... It, well, she doesn't need to fill it in for us, but she needs to fill in the missing information to law enforcement. What happened when I got back from the restaurant? Oh, did you go in, put the rubbish out, come back in, and then go and have a shower or whatever, get his night clothes on? Did he go and play in the room for a bit before going to bed? We don't know none of that. We just know that he put the trash out, he was playing in the room. I told him at nine o'clock it was time for bed. I let him stay up a little bit later some nights. Why would you let him stay up later on a Sunday night when he's got school in the morning? You let him stay up later on a Friday night or a Saturday night, but not on a Sunday night. Oh, well, we're going to talk about that now. Hold on. I'm going to pull that picture up. I've got my email, so I've got to open my emails up. Right. Um, so the only way I can share pictures is if I save it to my email. I don't know how to do it yet any other way. Right. Right. Must see if I want. Right. Now this is a picture. Can I see me anymore? I'll have a look. Yes, yes. Right. This is a picture that someone took the weekend. Right. Now, as soon as I seen that, I thought, oh my God, that's Sebastian. Because, hold on, I'll see if I can get the other picture up by, I don't think I can get the other picture up by the side. 
two together here, right? See this bit, that little pointy bit of his hair? See that little pointy bit of his hair there? Right? And then people were saying, and his glasses, they look, they look quite thick-rimmed, a bit like these. But because his head's down, we can't get a full picture. Now, I, if that had been me, I'd been out of my car. I'd been going Sebastian. Sebastian was. And then if this woman came out and said, no, that's my son, such and such, I'd go, I'm really sorry, but he's the spitting image of a child that's gone missing, a 15-year-old autistic lad that went missing. His hair's the same, he's got the same sort of style of glasses, he builds his same, you know what I mean? So, and as someone pointed out, the picture is trying us. I can't get any further, so hold on. Let me come out of this. I've got the picture. Is that it or no? It's that one. It. Right now, look at his shoe. Right, the shoes. Yeah, they are very similar. Nope. The only thing different is the colour. And that's got a logo on there, like the other one did. It's just the colour is different. See what I mean? There is a logo, but the colour is different, a darker. But, I don't know, it's, what do you think, what does everyone think about this? Because when I first saw it, I thought, oh my God, is that Sebastian? No, that's Sebastian, that's thrown everyone, everything anyone has thought out the window. Apart from those people who thought, who've been going around saying he was kidnapped, he is being held by someone. Exactly. Now, I did put a comment in when someone posted this. I said, when did they report it? Did they report it? Now, me, if that had been me, I'd have been bum, 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 snap, 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 and getting whoever I'm with or myself phoning 911. Right? I'd have been phoning the police there and then. Because if she waited like two hours or whatever until she got home and then looked at the photos and thought, well, is it him? Is it him? We don't know. The shoes do The shoes do look alike though, don't they? Right? There's his shoes there. I don't really want... I don't really want to zoom in because... It hides them with that. This bit here hides it. But there's the shoes there. And he's got a logo there. Yeah. Then um, this one. Apart from the colour, they're very similar. And the logo there. And someone, people say, oh, this has been... Um, Photoshop, his arm's not, where's his left arm? Right? His head is in the, his hair is in the sky. No, his hair isn't in the sky. His hair, his head is in the Sort of thing with that. He'll put out the back, the back line marker. And this lad is like, there's his left arm. 
But that is so like Sebastian. Now, honestly, people start asking, who's this woman? Does anyone know who this woman is? Now, you don't know. Perhaps this woman might come out and say, that's me with my son. You know what I mean? But I'm sorry. I would have been following them around. I would have been following them around. After phoning the police, I would have kept eye on them. I would have kept track of them. I got the car registration number. Everything. Everything I would have done to make sure that this was checked out properly and this was not or was Sebastian. Either way. Now, apparently, Chris said, Chris said it wasn't Sebastian. So, someone sent this photo to Katie. Stating this is going around on a Facebook page. I've seen this on a Facebook page. Could this be Sebastian? She's come back and said, we've seen this picture and we're waiting to get the 100% confirmation one way or the other. She's not sure herself. She's waiting on confirmation. Right? Now, that's the closest we've got of any child looking like Sebastian. But as I said, it's out there on Facebook pages, people I've got on YouTube channels. So there's bound to be someone. Because <coughs> 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 they say, uh, uh, it's one in every six person will know someone you know. You know, I might, I might know someone who knows someone else who knows me. You know what I mean? So there might be someone on our face on this these Facebook pages, on these YouTube channels, on these TikToks, on these in Instagrams, on the Twitter. Mark I know that lad. That's my nephew or that's my grandson. That's my my daughter, you know what I mean? Yes, and he's wearing black pants. His top is different, but I should imagine it would be after, what, 60, 60 days? I can't get any closer. But I wish it just looked up and we could have got up. Like people go, his chin it seems out of place, his nose seems different. Right? Hold on, let's go to the other picture first. His nose looks different, his chin looks out of place. So, it's hard to say. I say it could be a possibility. Right? But why would he be out in such an open place? The woman said when she was noticed this, he didn't seem scared. He seemed comfortable with who he was with. So is it some... If that is Sebastian, right? If that is Sebastian, then who the hell is this woman? But honest to God, I have been on the flipping tap. From the moment I saw it, I have been followed at a distance. Right? And I've been taking photos. Right, of him, and of them. And I've got registration number, tag numbers, whatever they call them in the USA. I've, I've, I've got phone the police up before anything. Because this was like, five hours away from where he lives. Yeah. Yeah, local police could be in there in what, 15 minutes maybe? 20 minutes? But if, if, if they got into a car and drove, she could have got the uh, tag number, the car tag. But that is too like Sebastian, not to be Sebastian, if you know what I mean. Too like him. But let's say, Ah, uh, but photoshopped. It's left. It's got no left arm. You can see it's left arm. You can see it.
There's his left arm. Right. But them shoes as well are so similar to the type he wear he wore in that other picture. And I'll tell you now something about autistic children as well. They're very fussy about what shoe they wear. They like my one grandson is on the spectrum. He's he likes trainers. And he likes certain trainers. Right, certain ones. He's not one for shoes, but he'll wear certain trainers. My other grandson, he's more for trainers as well than shoes. He will wear them if he has to. But I can assure you within if he wore shoes at the time, say we'd been out for the day somewhere where we had to wear shoes rather than trying to say to a wedding, something like that. I can assure you, within 10 minutes of sitting down at a table, he'd have his shoes off. He's more into the trainers than shoes. And some children, like now my grandson who I've just had this weekend, he don't like the tags in the back of his clothes. They itch. They make. So he's much. They have to cut out all the tags out the clothing. Right. He don't. He is a bit funny with socks. So they started you know, putting like, trying a socks on him. Well, ankle socks. So. It's it's amazing how different children react to well, with autism react to different ideas. But that is the spitting image of Sebastian. <coughs> <coughs> Maybe someone he knows, yeah. But who? Someone said could that be Chris's sister? No, I don't think that's his sister. I don't think she's going to be caught out in public with him. You know what I mean? Could be a family member, someone we don't know of. You still get different more on JLR? This is the only one I've seen going around. Going around. This one. I'll have to have a look on JLR. I did watch this interview we just done before coming on here about this photo. About this photo. I didn't see any different photo. Perhaps I've got up and gone out to do something. But that is so like Sebastian. At least Katie hasn't said no to that Sebastian. Do you know what I mean? Perhaps he did walk out the house and perhaps just by chance he didn't leave no scent. Perhaps he did manage to get to the cameras because it was pitch black. Do you know what I mean? We've got to look at all the... You have to look at all the scenarios. I just don't see how he can leave that and not and not uh, had in that house and around that house and I don't care what Chris said about the three dogs picking up the scent we only heard of one dog on that batch call picking up a scent one dog not right So, and you didn't seem too happy about that dispatch call being released, did you, CP? No, because it was information we got, that he had, that we got hold of. So, <laughs> But that, I'll tell you now, if he was looking up, we'd know better. He'd be able to say more, wouldn't we? But the black trousers, them trainers are so similar. To the type he wears now. 
And they said the nose doesn't seem right. But I think he's looking down. Square on, like. There. You know what I mean? He's looking down. But I don't know. You look at that nose. It does come out. Like, widening out a bit. If you look at it there. Just seem a bit wider. A bit like on here. I see his nose there. Um, see how he's got that the wideness of his nose, yeah? Now this has got a bit of a wideness of a nose. I wish I had the technology where I could put one picture over another. Sort of thing. Like they're doing the CSIs. <laughs> I wish I had that technology. Well, that's just so, too like him not to be him, if you know what I mean. Just too like him not to be him. And the glasses. But it's this bit of hair here. There. And there. Uh, it's just now a waiting game to see what happens. Just a waiting game. He didn't like it, you know. And I've got an interview here with Seth just before that uh, panel light thing at the bridge. Oh, it's not on there, is it? It's on here. It's on my account. Alright, let's stop this one. Take it back to the beginning. Let's share it. But he didn't like that. Because that, that was information he had. Right? He was going around telling people those three dogs that hit on the scent and took it to the same place. But on that um, dispatch call, you only hear of one dog hitting on the scent and going up to there. One dog. Well, this isn't very long, it's only 19 seconds, so. If someone has you run, get to a phone, call 911, tell them who you are. Call 911, son. Your dad's out here looking for you. And I'm trying to find you, but I need your help, son. I need your help. If someone has you run, get to a phone, call 911, tell them who you are. Call 911, son. Your dad's out here looking for you. And I'm trying to find you, but I need your help, son. I need your help. That is heartbreaking. You know what I mean? And I can understand when he says, when you hear people say, oh, but he's, he's not with us no more. You, know, you don't say that to a parent. Not to a parent. To... And like my son said the other week, we was talking about this case, and he said, and he brought up another case, a Magdalene McCann. I don't know if you've heard of her. She was an English girl that went missing abroad. And she's never been found. But apparently there is um, someone being charged with her murder. Or something like that. To be honest with you, I lost I lost all interest in the case. Because I said from day one, her mother and her father had something to do with it. Right? And it's like, I just think they're blaming, putting the blame on this guy. 
because he was in the area at the time and all this lot. I think they're using him as an escape goat. Anyway, so Simon said, unless they show us a body, I will still, I have to believe she's alive. He said, and the same with Sebastian, unless they show, we see a body or a body confirmed by the father, right, then we have to believe he's alive. And we do. We have to keep that hope there that he's alive. That picture I just showed you, I, put, I can't put it back up on my emails. Right? That picture, that is hope. That could be Sebastian. Why is it, if it is Sebastian, why hasn't he tried using a phone? What it is, you think it is? Tracy, I, I'd like to think and hope and pray it is, but I was just going to say, why hasn't he used a phone? Perhaps he can't get to one. Perhaps he's being monitored on where he goes and what he does. You know what I mean? Perhaps he's not allowed to anywhere near a phone. Perhaps he's, whenever he goes out anywhere, he's... Okay, that woman was a few feet away from me, but if he could try to run, I'm sure she was with someone else. That could have caught him. If he's going to do that, if he's going to make a break for it, he's got to do it when he knows they're not there, where he knows he's got a good few minutes to get away before they notice he's gone. He needs a good few minutes to run before they think, holy cow, where's he gone? Because in that close to a child, you can still grab him and stop him from running. And believe me, I know my grandson can run like a fucking... Oh, God. And I have trouble catching him, but I do. I catch him. I might be half dead by the time I catch him, but I catch him. But I think if he's being monitored and watched closely by whoever it is, if it, if someone has got him. Like, I was just watching some, um, uh, what was her name? She's on my TV now. She's, I don't know, I'll see what if I can pull her name up. Oh. I can't think of her name, but she's a, she just podcasts, she just YouTube, and she sits there and talks about certain cases and how it happened. Now, I was listening to one earlier, and it was about a family, a mother and a son, and a daughter, and the husband was working away from home, right? And... He had a friend who they'd known for 16 years. 16 years. And um, this young girl was, what, 17? 16, sorry, when it all went down. So he'd known this family from the day the young girl was born. And they'd become really good, good friends. So while the father was, like, working away from home, this guy, they looked on him for help and support. Well, time went on and he was grooming her and she didn't like it. And she, and they was going to this party. The mother, the son, and the daughter were invited to this party because they're supposed to be leaving, going away somewhere. So it'd be the last chance they'd have to spend together. Right? Well, the daughter didn't want to go to this party because she didn't like being around him, around this guy, because of the emails he'd been sending and messages and everything. Anyway, to cut a long story short, the mother said, either I will pick you up after uh, 
cheerleading, right? Or I think his name was Jim. Jim Rob. Well, it came out that Jim was there to pick her up. And her heart just sank because she thought, God, I've got to be in the car now with him for like an hour. But I'll bear with it because I know when I get to the house, to the cabin or wherever, my mum and my brother are going to be there. Wow. As she's walked in, she's seen her mum's car there. No, her mum's car wasn't there, sorry. She said, where's my mum's car? Uh, she's probably nipped over to, down the road because you know how your, son, your brother likes to play with that family down the road. Anyway, she's gone in the house and then she's seen her mum's bag all open. Everything in her mum's bag on the table. And she turned round and as she's turned round, it's threw these handcuffs at her and told her to put them on. So she's scared of him buying it, scared buying it. So she put these handcuffs on. Anyway, unknown to her, her brother, the family dog, and her mother were both killed, right? And left in the garbage. He then set timers for literally like, I think it was an hour, an hour after they left, that the house would start a fire. So this house is going up in flames. And they find this mother and the son and the dog, but no daughter. So then there's this big man search. And, they, and people had seen this man with this girl down by this lake, big river. But she seemed okay with him. She didn't seem scared of him or anything. But they just thought it was odd. And then they told the police when they got home because they'd seen it on the news. They told the police. So the police were out there looking for her. Eventually, they found her. Because she'd seen the helicopter and she's waving her arms to attract their attention. But I think I didn't quite hear the full story, but I heard that Jim had died. Right? And what it was, it was a bit of like the Stockholm syndrome where she got where she's sort of like, okay, because he didn't even told them, right? He said, no, your mum and your brother are in the garage. They, they will find them when the police turn up, they'll find them, right? So she thought her mum and her brother were okay. It wasn't until the police got hold of her and got her back to the hospital and whatever and then told her about the mum and the brother and she said, no, 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 he set timers for the house to set on fire, but not the garage. No, no. You know what I mean? He told her he set timers for the house to go up on flames, but he hadn't he set the house and the garage to go up in flames. So she was so distraught. But it was like one woman pulled up a alongside him at one stage and he said you say anything out of place i'll kill you and i'll kill her right so this young girl was just doing anything to protect others because she knew she could know i don't know him i want to get home and all this lot he would have killed her killed that woman and then killed her right so she had to believe what he said but, so this could be happening with Sebastian. If while we're out, anyone approaches you, your name's not Sebastian, your name's this. You know what I mean? If you say anything different, harm can come to your mum. Or harm could come to your dad. You know what I mean? But that's how sick people are. So perhaps someone has got him, and they are holding him. But not to the point where he's locked up 24-7, but they're with him 24-7. Yeah? They do. They could be going out for days. But like I said, they probably said, if anyone asks, your name's not Sebastian, it is now such and such. If you say anything different, harm will come to your mum 
and harm can come to your dad. So they could be saying that to him if he is still alive and they have got him out there. They could be coming up with saying those sort of things to him. It's now been 60 days he's been with, if he is still alive and he is out there and he is with a family. It's now been 60 days he's been with his family. He'll, he'll do anything to protect his dad and his mum. Because I don't care how evil a mum is, a child will always see the, the positive in him, in that person. Because at the day, a child is gives love unconditionally. Right? So, yes, you hurt me. You've hurt me as a as a mother. You've hurt me. You let this person you call your husband use a belt on me. You let this person you call your husband do this, right? But I still love you. That's unconditional love. So, and he loves his dad. So he wouldn't want any harm coming to his mom. Or his dad. So if someone has got him, they could be saying that to him. Brainwashing him. You're not Sebastian Wash. Your name is such and such. Right? So we've got to look on that possibility as well. Okay, perhaps someone has got him. Right? Perhaps it was a handover on the Sunday after the steakhouse. We don't know. But apparently law enforcement have got the clothing that he wore on the Sunday. The clothing he wore on Sunday is what they use for the dogs for the scent. And law enforcement and TBI now have those items. Why can they told us that at the beginning? Why was it such a big secret that... We, uh, Seth couldn't even be told that. I I believe Sebastian was scared of Chris. And as I said, he may not have been living there. But you, when you've got someone like Chris, right, who could stay on a phone call, you wait till I get home. You wait till I get home. That poor lad is living in fear that any day, any time, that guy could turn up. You know what I mean? So, we've got to keep the possibility that he may be, he, he is alive and he is out there and someone has, he's, he's like this Stockholm Syndrome, or what they call it, or... They've literally brainwashed him. Yeah? Perhaps they don't have TV on when he's around. So he may not be seeing none of this. He may not be seeing none of this at all. Because this isn't really on mainstream TV. Very, very, only very short clips are on the news of him. And it's not every day, not every night. And we have to keep his name out there because every time he just needs another big, something else to happen, right? Another big story to come out. Sebastian's name will be second-hand news. We can't have that. We need Sebastian's name first at the top of that list. We've got to keep his name and his picture out there. Even if it even if it means people like myself who come on YouTube and constantly talk about Sebastian, constantly go over these interviews, constantly look at pictures that have been coming out. We've got to keep his name out there. Because as soon as you let his name and his picture drop, as soon as another big story comes out, his name picture drops down and down and down. And that's what Chris wants. 
Chris wants his name and his picture to drop out. And so it didn't exist. Well, we can't let that happen. We can't let that happen for Seth. And we're definitely not going to let it happen for this lad here. No way. Am I letting this happen to this lad here? Hold on. I'll pull it up. To this lad. I'm not letting it happen. He needs... Because when CPS came to the house, Chris told them Sebastian was lying and said to Sebastian, you're lying, aren't you? Well, I'm sorry, but CPS came to their house and CPS said what Chris said they did, where they turned around and said, you can't go around lying, accused, making, telling lies about other people, because you'll get them into trouble and you'll get yourself into trouble. And I'm sorry. If that is what was actually said, that is disgusting. Because then this lad is thinking, well, who can I talk to? I've tried to talk to the school and you know, no one wants to know. I can't talk to my dad because he probably didn't want his dad going ape shit on him, on Chris. You know what I mean? He probably didn't want his dad to know what was going on because, as I said, a child's love for a mother is always there unconditionally. So he loves his mum. He didn't want this big hurrah with his dad and his mum and his dad maybe going out and punching someone's lights out. You know what I mean? He didn't want that because it would be getting his dad into trouble and then he's got to face the consequences then again from his mum and from CP. That's why he wouldn't tell his dad. Plus then when he did tell the school, CPS come out and said, you can't tell lies about people because you get them into trouble and you'll get yourself into trouble. So he's thinking, who can I talk to now? I've got no one. I've got no one I can talk to. The only person he could talk to was his grandma. Right? But he swore her to secrecy. And I think really she should have said, you know what, Sebastian, I can't do this. Your dad needs to know what's going on. But he didn't want his dad knowing because he knew what his dad would do. That's why he didn't tell his dad. And this poor lad is somewhere. And I hope and pray he's alive. I hope and pray. I hope and pray that picture is Sebastian. Right? Because then we'll find out the truth. Because so, if that is the case, someone either come into their home and took him. Right? Or there was a hangover. Now, if someone don't come into their home, why didn't the camera, the door ring doorbell across the road? If the ring doorbell could see his bedroom light come on and off, they'd have seen come, someone coming up to the front door or up towards the back door. Why? They'd have seen it. If they catch him on the taking the bins out, they'd have seen someone coming up the driveway. If they'd have seen, if they could see his bedroom lights coming on and off, so I could see someone coming to the front door. So if someone comes through the front door, who's got the code, come up the stairs or went, went into his bedroom because his bedroom's right by the front door, really, went in his bedroom, picked him up and carried him out. Right? Why isn't it on that doorbell? Why? That don't make sense. So there's two possibilities. There's my possibility, my opinion, I should say, of what happened. Or there's a possibility there was a handover that, or someone did come into the home and take Sebastian and had literally brainwashed him 
is under so much stress, like, don't say anything, we're going out here today, you be good, don't say nothing, if anyone approaches you, you're not Sebastian, you're this. They've had 60 days to get that in his head. They've had 60 days of not letting him get near a phone, near a TV, the internet. Perhaps they thought, okay, we've had him in 60 days. We'll take him out for once. We'll let him see how it goes. You know what I mean? We don't know. We've got to wait and see now what happens. So, and I hope the private investigators are looking into this as well. Because I don't trust law enforcement. And I definitely don't trust TBI. They made the right pig zero of a summer moon whales case. To his mum's house. What do you mean, Tracy? But that picture of him. Oh. Well, I say that picture that someone took, who they believe is in, it's too, too, it's too much like him not to be. You know what I mean? Yeah, he did. Yeah, that was it. He did say he didn't want to go back to his mum's, but he didn't say why. Now, he said he has to have a good reason. Because if he just said, okay, I won't take you home, right? Kathy, Katie, I should say, would have hit the roof. She'd have took him to court. He'd have lost custody, uh, visiting rights of him, everything, right? Because it would be Sebastian's word against hers. I don't believe me. Don't believe the mother. Do you think they're planned it? If it's an abduction, then yes, they're planned it. But if it's what I think, in my opinion, the way perhaps he did go to bed, he did fall out of bed, and that was a thud. He's hit his head. His mum said, you, "Did you fall out of bed?" But bang, he's gone. No, um, no, mum. Right, okay. Well, whatever you're doing, just get to bed. You know what I mean? Perhaps he did knock his head that night. He's got back into bed, gone to sleep. She's gone in the morning. And I went in and woke him up. How can you wake someone up? And he was gone. And he's gone. So how can you wake someone up if he's gone? I just want him found. Because I do not want this... Dropping down where people go, you know what, I can't take this no more. I've had enough of this case. But I won't. I will, every night I will do a live, even if it's only an hour or whatever. I've gone to two hours, 15 minutes now. But I have managed to do what I wanted to do tonight. And a little bit more. But I will look into that Ken Davis information tomorrow. See what I can get. And then once I get that information, whether it's an email or whatever, I can check then the dates. And if he still lives there or not. Because it may just not be updated. So we'll see what we can do. So anyway. Um, yesterday, you know, I said I get flagged up on YouTube for fl playing that video of Sebastian at the beginning and at the end. Yeah, I got flagged. Right, but it didn't affect the video. He was scared of telling his dad. I, I agree, totally agree. He was scared of telling his dad. Because he didn't want his mum to get in trouble because it's unconditional love every time. And something someone else told me years ago, right? Like someone said, say you've got a child who's being abused by, I don't know, say, say the father, right? No, let's just say the mother. Say the mother. He's being abused by the mother, right? 
yet that child will always go running to the mother. Yeah? They go, well, it can't be the mother who's abusing that child, because the child goes to that mother all the time. The child goes to that mother because he knows that if he goes to the father, she's going to have a go at him. She's going to go mental. Why don't you pick your father for? You know, you know, you should come to me. I'm the one that feeds you. I'm the one that clothes you. I'm the one that, you know what I mean? So they always go to the one who's abusing them. So if you know of a child, if you think there's a child being abused, I'm not saying you should, but just watch who they go to. Just watch. Right? I'm not saying it's a hundred percent. Definitely that, that say the mother is the abuser or whatever. But the high chances, it's high chances that the child will always go to the abuser. So he's not going to want any harm coming to his mum, even though she's not maybe, well, I think she's abusing him as well. She just, because I think Seth, uh, Chris is on the phone saying, oh, he hasn't done his bedroom. Well, you know what to do, don't you, Katie? You go in there and you tell him, bag it all up and take it out by the bin. Oh, he's lied. Well, you know what to do there, don't you, Katie? I think Chris is telling Katie what to do. And I think Chris is also saying, wait till I get home. Just you wait till I get home. This poor lad's living in fear every day that he could walk in that door. Every day, that child. And I'm sorry, I think Seth is kicking himself black and blue. Because he's only finding all this out since Sebastian went missing. Oh, and apparently Sebastian didn't want to go and live with him. He was only going... The reason he didn't want to live with him is he didn't want to do the online schooling. Now, the online schooling wasn't forever. It was a temporary thing. And I think it was more like just to assess him so that they didn't just throw him back into a school, which is new to him, new children. So by doing it online, they can assess him as well. He can get used to the, the classroom environment from the screen, being on a screen, yeah? And so then when they do go, when he does go to the school, they know what, what class to put him in. And what level is at? and all this stuff. Because I know when my grandson started P1, why? He should have been in P2, but they kept him back a year. Anyway, he went into P1, and because the nursery he was at had only had him going from literally 10.30 in the morning to 10.30 to 11.30, 11, 11, 12. One thirty, so I think 1.30, 2 o'clock for three hours a day. If that, if that, sometimes it was less. Sometimes his mum would just get in the door, which was what, 20, 10 minutes walk away. Uh, can you come pick your son up? You know what I mean? So he goes into P1, and I thought he's not going to cope being there all day. And he didn't. So then they started him back on like three hours. And I thought, oh God, no, not three hours again. You know what I mean? But what they did is they then had him through like the mornings. And then they had him for mornings to lunchtime. And after lunchtime, he'd come home. But they found out lunchtime wasn't a good thing for him. So then what they did was, they had him in the morning, he would come home for his lunch, then they started him back again in the afternoon. He loves school. He loves school. And he comes home every day now for his lunch. 
It's only up the road, five minute, five ten minute walk at the most up the road. So Annie loves coming home for his lunch. Annie's thriving in the school. And the school was a bit mad about the nursery because they from the reports they had of the nursery, they was expecting this um out of control child. A child that was uh, abusive, a bully, loud, and they was took back. They was quite expecting a really bad child to be up on them. So they was expecting it. No, uh, the tent man said, it's nothing, like, well, it's nothing like what the nursery put in their report. And we said, we know that. We knew that, but the nursery, and I talked to one woman once outside where I live, and my grandson was with me, and he's playing away, and it was something where they get, it's in a group, they get together, and what they do, they got all these junk, like old tyres, old barrels, uh, uh, tarp, that tarping, Tarping stuff and stuff like that. Anything they don't need, they use. And they build things with it. They, they they just have fun. They just let the children have fun. And I was talking to one of the coordinators. And I said, and I was talking about the nursery. And I said, I can't tell you the name of the nursery. And she said, come on, tell me. So I did. You know what she said? Uh, we've had a lot of reports about that nursery. It doesn't help children who need, with special educational needs. They don't. And yet they kept saying for two years or more, oh, it'll be okay here. We can help him. We've got everything we need to help him. They didn't. They held him back. And now he's gone into P1, where really he should be in P2. But he's in P1, which is fine. And he's thriving. He loves school. In fact, if his mum goes, oh, you can't go into school tomorrow, babe, you're not very well. No! I want to go to school. He's the only child I know who wants to go to school, be it ill or not. He wants to go to school. He loves it there. So, but as I said, they, they can't just get one child, an autistic child, from one school and take them, throw them into another school. You have to ease them in slowly and that's what the online schooling was about ease him in slowly and then bring him in so he might not have liked it but that was the only reason he didn't want to go to his dad because he didn't want to do the online school not because his dad was shouting at him or abusive or swore a lot or you know what I mean? It's like they said, said uh, Chris my dad, like, uh, Sebastian didn't like going to his dad because his dad smoked. His dad smokes outside. Not in the house, he smokes outside. Right? Uh, I'm sure he'd rather have that than have someone screaming at him all the time. Someone making fun of him all the time. You know what I mean? So, but Chris would put Seth down at any chance he got. It's like, in that interview, well, he didn't want to go to yours. Only because of the online school. That was it. But Sebastian knew as well. It was, wasn't a full-time thing. It was a part, it was only temporary. Until Rob and just threw him into a school. Oh, God. Rob and just threw him into a school where we knew the break him in slowly. So, and yet people are putting out that he's only going for the summer. No, he wasn't. He's going there. He's, he's going to start staying at his dad's from the beginning of the summer holidays. And then go to school. Right? And people are going, well, what's he going to do when he's at work? 
but if he's got a night shift, he's got to do. Then I'm sure he's, he's going to ask someone to uh, house sit, stay with him. You know what I mean? So, um, there's ways of getting around and ways of helping, getting help. If you've got a child and you've got to work, there's ways of getting help. And Liz Lag, I hope and pray you're fine, Sebastian, because you're going to have so many friends. So many friends. You're going to have people right sending you cards for your birthday, for Christmas, everything. There's kids out there. I'll tell you something. I had a picture of Sebastian on my laptop the other day. And my grandson came in. And he went, Oh, what you got there, Grand? I said, Yo, it's just a picture on my screen. And he said, I like him. Yeah, he didn't know who Sebastian was, but he liked him by his picture. And it was this picture that I've got here that I had upon my screen. Yes, Chris was trying to make Seth feel really bad the other day. Um, Chris was trying to make Seth feel really bad about saying that Sebastian was his son. Well, Seth, Sebastian is Seth's son. He's not your son. He's your stepson. You've got no right to call him son. You've got no right to call him stepson. He's your wife's child. It's not your child, it's your wife's child. Just remember that, Chris. Seth is the father. Katie is the mother. You're just a nobody. Anyway, we've now gone on to two hours and a half. And I will try and get that information about King Davis. Just to, to say, yes, he still lives there, or no, he doesn't. You know what I mean? So I can literally write that off my list. And let's keep an ear out for what they say about that photo, what the police say. It'd be nice if they actually come out and said, look, uh, this photo that was given to us, we have checked on it. We have gone and found him, and we've done checks. And it isn't Sebastian. It'd be nice if they actually come out and publicly said something like that. I like that picture. Well, I like the one with the snake. Even though I'm not a fan of snakes. Oh, even, and my son is. My son loves snakes. Right? So, even though I'm not a fan of snakes, I love that picture of him with that snake because... That smile is, his smile is just too contagious. You see that smile and you just got a smile yourself, you know what I mean? You're having a bad day. Look at this photo. That will cheer you up. If you're having one bad day, like everything's going wrong. Your washing machine stopped working. Your, I don't know, your tumble dryer's not working. You... You had a power cut or your TV's got smashed up. Just look at that photo. That will take all your worries away. But it's just the fact I had him on my screen. And he just walked in and said, who he asked who he was. And I just said, oh, is this the lad we're looking for? We're trying to help find. Anyway, I like him. So anyway, I'm going to say good night. Thank you, Tracy, for being here in chat with me. And anyone else who is in chat? No, we've got all the others who are on Twitter. So if you're on Twitter, please leave me a little heart. Show some love, please. Please like this video. Share this video. That's all I ask. And if you're on Twitter, 
please think about coming over and subscribing. Right? That will put a smile on my face as well. So, till tomorrow. Hang on, hang on. Till tomorrow. I say good night.